Welcome back to All in Law. Guys, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, a really very important topic for USMLE and for other board examinations. Um, this is regarding uh, how to diagnose whether it's an acidosis or uh, alkalosis. Uh, this is a really very important topic I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about the basic things and uh, I'm sure definitely this will help you for your board examinations. Guys, uh, before starting a discussion on this, uh, I would request you to subscribe to our channel and uh, please do share our videos with your friends. Okay guys, so please share our videos with your friends. You can share our videos with your friends through Facebook, through Twitter or through email. Guys, we need your support, we need your love and if you have any feedbacks, do tell us. And uh, in our channel, we have more than 500 medical video lectures, medical video lectures from a different uh, physicians and the surgeons from USA and UK. So let me clearly start this uh, new discussion on uh, acidosis and alkalosis. This is usually a very important topic. Acidosis and whether it's an alkalosis. Remember there are two things in acidosis we have it could be a respira respiratory acidosis or it could be a metabolic acidosis and in alkalosis same we have a respiratory alkalosis and metabolic alkalosis. The other thing is metabolic acidosis with compensation or respiratory alkalosis with compensation and so on blah blah. But right now I will be talking about these basic things. Okay guys, so let me quickly start this how, sh how you should approach. That's really very important. Yeah, for USMLE really step 1 to step 3. Okay guys, so first remember the first step. The first step what you need to do if you want to see, if you want to know whether the patient is acidotic or alkalotic. What you need to do is look for a pH. Remember the pH is the most important guys. This is a really very important thing and this is the first thing you should need you need to look for Look at the patient's pH whether it's less than 7.4 or whether it's uh, more than 7.4 Okay, so the pH gonna decide whether the patient is acidotic or alkalosis though there are three things what we look but the most important the first thing what you need to look is a pH so 7.4 or less than 7.4 or more than 7.4 okay guys so let's go ahead and move further let's take a pH less than 7.4 if the pH is less than 7.4 definitely this patient is acy Demia means he's acidotic, right? So now you have to decide whether it's an alkalotic, uh, whether it's an a respiratory or um, metabolic. So that's what we need to find out. Okay, guys. So let's the next step would be look at the PCO2. The PCO2. Okay, whether the PCO2 is more than 40 millimeter of mercury or it's less than 40 millimeter of mercury okay guys so so remember whether it's more than 40 or less than 40 if it's more than 40 then the patient is respiratory acidotic respiratory he's having respiratory acidosis okay guys it's a respiratory acidosis cool because PCO2 causes this acidic environment 
and that leads to the lower of lowering of the pH and that's why the patient is having a respiratory acidosis and this is very simple and definitely will catch this one right so now if the pH is less than 40 means it's not the PCO2 responsible for the acidemia of his blood is a somewhat other than that that's nothing but we call it as a metabolic acidosis right if it's more than PCO2 PCO, PCO2 increasing the PCO2 causes lowering the pH and results in the PC, uh, acidemia if the PCO2 is lower means it's not because of the PCO2 the acidemia is not because of the PCO2 it's some, something different that's why we call it as a metabolic acidosis okay guys so you better know why what is the cause for metabolic acidosis we'll discuss shortly so let's move on to the this topic that's a respiratory acidosis what are the causes why the patient has developed the respiratory acidosis the conditions where you see the respiratory acidosis are let me change the color all right so can you guess what's going on in the patient means the PCO2 is accumulating in the body and that is known as a hypoventilation hypoventilation right so now the patient is having a hypoventilation hypoventilation now find out the causes for hypoventilation that's nothing but airway obstruction yeah good airway obstruction right acute lung disease acute lung disease okay then opioids if the patient is taking opioids okay then weakening of the respiratory muscles okay then we have patient might be taking sedatives right for suicidal attempts so these are the causes and these causes causes a lowering of the pH and results in the respiratory acidosis okay guys so are you clear right let's move on to the next important that's a metabolic acidosis metabolic acidosis now metabolic acidosis there are two things the patient had low pH so it results in uh, what do you call acidosis okay acidosis and the second important thing was the PCO2 was a low so the cause is not the respiratory and it's a metabolic so we call it as metabolic acidosis with compensation right with this condition together we call it as a lower of the pH and low PCO2 less than 40 we call it as what you call we call it as metabolic acidosis okay with compensation what is compensation what the body is doing he has a metabolic acidosis but the body is trying to compensate how it is compensating it is compensating by lowering the PCO2 level in the body right oh, good so how would they do they hyperventilate they expel the CO2 from the lungs so what the lungs need to do lungs need to do hyperventilate they need to hyperventilate so hyperventilation is a cause for this metabolic acidosis with compensation great let's move on to the causes how you need to do that whenever you get the patient with a metabolic acidosis with what you call a metabolic acidosis with compensation with compensation you want you need to do the next best step would be the best next step would be check oh my god color not didn't check check an ion cap 
and this is really very important and you need to know the levels of the NN gap and that's really very important for you okay guys I will tell you what's a NN gap actually the NN gap is nothing but let me check the let me change the color clear this the N ion gap so there are extra ions okay so we calculate it as sodium okay minus of chloride plus of bicarb okay so for example if sodium is 135 minus of 100 uh, minus of 20 the score would be 15 right so this is a normal level of anion gap and this is a normal levels okay so it's a slight high normal level is can we can calculate as a 8 to 12 remember it's up to 8 to 12 okay this is a for example I'm telling just an example how you need to calculate okay so let's move on to the other important topic